I'm very glad to be here and to have learned from many great presentations previously by various speakers and learned that AI has been everywhere. And AI looks like a black box so far, right? So my talk will dive a little bit deeper down to take a peek inside the black box. I hope there are some interest for this. As engineers, we always are. So we have learned that deep neural networks have been used in many areas in, for RTC. And another example is when the received video is blurry and, and uh, the viewing experience would be negatively impacted by the blurriness and deserves some enhancement for, with more details. So AI can help with this as well. So super resolution has been used for enhanced details and AI can help. So my talk is about AI-based super resolution algorithm. So in our, in our application, there are situations when lower resolution pictures or lower bitrate bit streams are transmitted over the network, especially when the bandwidth becoming very challenged and the decoded picture would be very blurry and affecting the viewing experience negatively. So we propose the super resolution as a standalone post-processing step in our video processing pipeline. And it doesn't involve previous encoding or not even about decoding. And you may be wondering why we don't put it in front before the encoding. And the, the short answer for that is that uh, detail enhanced video will be harder to compress. And also the details would be lost again after compression. So it's better to put as a post processing. And we know the generative and other server network has been very effective in generating details. So it's also the base of our super resolution model. And the best result is usually obtained by employing the big model running on big platforms such as a server computer with thousands of GPUs. And also the training has to be rely on big data, a lot of data. And uh, this doesn't fit for mobile devices. So the challenge for us is to come up with smaller models which can be running on the mobile devices in real time and without consuming a lot of power or without causing any heat issues. Meanwhile, their performance has to be good and acceptable. And also the training is better be based on a reasonable amount of data instead of a huge amount of data. Sometimes a big data is hard to, to get. <coughs> so let's take a quick check about the complexity of the uh, deep neural networks. So the classic models such as VGG and ResNet has millions of parameters. The parameters is also uh, uh, is, uh, are the weights for the neural networks, the, or, or also called coefficients. And the number of parameters is related to the complexity uh, uh, is actually um, directly related to the computing load and also the memory size. And so, so the model size is a direct indication of how complicated the model is. Generally, the more complicated a model, the more capability the model can give. And uh, VGG16 has 138 million parameters, and the uh, ResNet 101 has 44 million parameters. And uh, Google has come up with a much smaller model called MobileNet version 2. Uh, well, they have a um, version 1, and the version 2 is improved. And it only has 3.4 million parameters, which is significantly smaller than those classic big models, and uh, it's been used for object recognition on mobile devices. So take a look at ours. Uh, after many tweaking, training, and, uh, and uh, also derivation, we finally come up with uh, Agora, G-A-N-B, 
based super resolution model, which actually is very small, virtually nothing. And it's less than 1% of mobile network version two. I have to clarify these two models for different purposes. Uh, mobile network version two is for image classification, RC is for image sharpening for detail generation. But for lack of direct reference, this is still a very good indication of how simple our model is. So uh, a couple words for, for GANs. So GAN tries to learn the real data distribution. There are two networks in GAN model. is a generator and a discriminator. Those two networks work with each other and also works against each other. And uh, when they finally converge, the generator will generate uh, uh, generate image as close to the real data as possible. And meanwhile, the discriminator G will try to be as picky as possible before accepting the generated data as real data. So, so that's a very simple description of the, the GAN model. And uh, there are some inherent problems for those GN models, especially as the model is simplified. And one of them is the mode collapse. And uh, here's uh, a description of what mode collapse is. The target video, the target distribution has eight Gaussian distributions along the circle, around the circle. So GN, the GAN model is supposed to learn this distribution instead it only settles on one of the mod model. So it won't be able to learn the circular eight model distribution. And uh, when that applies to the real world problems, for example, like generating digits, the desired results would be like to generate all, t be able to generate all 10 digits instead a simplified or, or, or a, a plain GAN model can settle in one mode, which is only able to generate one single digit, as the bottom row shows, unlike the desired top row. So this is called mode collapse. So how to alleviate? We, we have done quite some work, and this is uh, uh, some of the work you're not sure. So I won't be able to elaborate a lot on this. So simply, I will try to explain intuitively on, on one of this, like the latent space optimization. So if you are interested in talk about like a locality constraint, tangent space optimization, we can talk offline. So, so <coughs> here, here is uh, uh, the following is uh, intuitive explanation about what it means to do some latent space optimization. So an image can usually be encoded or compressed into a lower dimensional domain. So that's how compression is, right? So we simply can understand the latent space as a compressed domain. So that's easier to, to understand, or even though it's an oversimplified description, but let's take it that way. And now, if we directly try to recover the image or generate the image from the compressed latent space, we would get into problems. So like this example is show uh, the, the Buddha picture on the left, and in the right is, uh, is a compressed latent space. We, we do some sampling here, as we usually do, we are generally only able to do uniform sampling uh, in this space. And we use this sampling, fit the sampling into the generator and uh, re to reconstruct the picture. And then overlay the reconstructed dots on the original surface, we get something like this. Well, we get a lot of dense dots in areas like in the leg or feet, but there on the head and the surface, the reconstructed dots are really sparse or nearly none on the head. So that means the face or head is not reconstructed at all. So, 
So the generator is actually trapped into a local minimum, and reconstruction from this latent space is very, very difficult to be a good one. And uh, the reason is the latent space is uh, highly irregular, and it's hard for us to, to do, to manipulate. So we can do some optimization for the latent space. Again, this is a compressed, irregular latent space, and it's some samplings. And uh, there's some optimization. After some optimization, the latent space would become uh, we so-called optimized. After optimization, we again to do uh, samples, some points uniformly here, and then we fit this optimized samples to the generator, we would get something like this. Again, overlaid on the, on the original picture, much nicer. So the, I use a met metaphor to, to do the uh, analogy. Suppose we fold the pictures arbitrarily many times, and then you are asked to choose some samples on the folded paper, on the folded paper, a flat paper. And uh, when the paper is flattened, those dots are required to be uniform. That's hard. It's really hard. And uh, without uh, some optimization, you, we human beings probably cannot do that at all. Right. And uh, after this optimization, we are able to do that. So, <coughs> so up to this point, I'd like to show you a, a video about uh, uh, the final algorithm we come up with. So here, as the line wipes through, the blurry picture would be clear. There are both images and embedded graphic elements. Both are cleared up significantly, very different. So, <coughs> yeah. So, and uh, we also have a live demo in our booth outside the Agora booth, we have a uh, cell phone, iPhone 7, which is running this model. And uh, as I said, the, because the model is so small, and uh, the footprint is small, and uh, the power consumption is really small, and uh, there's no heat issues of that. <coughs> and uh, yeah, because of that, we significantly improve the viewing experience. And also it's basically something like a 360p video encoded that 0.8 megapixels per second would really look like 720p video encoded at 1.6 megabits uh, per second or higher. Yeah. And in the future, we like to further explore new ways to improve the sharpness by more better understanding of the DNA mathematically. So we still have some new work in this area going on. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs>